What is going on guys? Welcome back here to the Ranking Review and today we're talking about the steps towards AEW's revolution which will be happening the first week of March this year. A little bit later than it was last year but still at the end of winter. Winter is over <laughs> I guess but uh, we got a couple matches lined up for it. AEW Dynamite happened last night and there was a bunch of stuff again on the, on the show that had some ramifications for what's coming up at Revolution. Probably the most headlining thing would be this uh, proposed match between Shaq and Cody Rhodes, which is, uh, honestly speaking, a very underdeveloped feud. It, it, it hasn't had the impact and the magnitude that I think AEW wanted. Um, obviously, the plan, as has been revealed, as we know now know, was that it was going to be Brandy and Cody against Jade and, Sha and Big Shaq, which would have been a huge, huge match. However... Um, with Brandy being pregnant and Cody Rhodes going, well, certain unforeseen things happen. Bro, have you heard of a condom or pulling out? Congratulations to them, however, for having a baby. It's a wonderful thing. Uh, Brandy's not going to be obviously participating in this match because she's pregnant. Uh, so we got Red Velvet, what is that? Velvet? Red Velvet showing up um, and making a pretty decent promo. Um, nothing great, but it was a strong promo and advocating to Cody to be his tag team partner in the match. And it took a long way to get to that. Arn Anderson had a decent, not, it looked like he got lost in the middle of it a little bit, but Arn Anderson had a decent promo as only Arn Anderson can give. And uh, I loved the little, the note about uh, how Dusty wrestled a match with Tully Blanchard, hopped on a plane and flew to witness Cody's being born. That was a really cool story to hear. I, I liked hearing that. But um, Cody does well with these situations. He is kind of the celebrity member of the v, uh, the VPs for AEW and the old school guy for AEW. So that's the, I do appreciate what Cody tries to bring to the show. Now, this match with Shaq, who's not obviously not a wrestler, and Jade, who's obviously not a wrestler, and Red Velvet, who's, you know, okay, but kind of green a little bit. Uh, well, I, I shouldn't say green, but she's just okay. She's not green, but she's okay. And Cody, who's the only probably talented wrestler in the bunch, that's going to be a lot of work. It was going to be a lot of work for Brandy anyway, but that that match has the potential to be a big cluster. I, I'm, I'm really kind of scared for it, but hopefully they manage to do something entertaining with it, which is all you can expect from that match. The Good Brothers wound up teaming up with the Young Bucks to take on the Dark Order. The Dark Order, you know, because of circumstances, have basically become faces now. Um, Silver is the, the breakout star from there, but I think all of them together, the Dark Order, who again, last year nobody gave a flying fig about them. They were a joke. They were terrible. They were on a, they ended uh, the first year of AEW on a very sour note, and now they're becoming fan favorites. Most of that crew is becoming fan favorites, and there's some really talented guys in that crew. But taking on the Good Brothers and the Young Bucks, the first time that they've teamed up since they left New J the Young, uh, Gals and Anderson left New Japan back in 2015, 16, whenever that was. Uh, this is the first time that they've teamed up since then, the first time they've been in a ring together since then. And that main event match, was, that eight-man tag match was actually a pretty damn good match. Um, the big note of it, though, is that the Young Bucks will be in the Battle Royal for the challengers to their tag titles which will be happening next week at Beach Blast. Now, the thing about that is that the t if the Young Bucks win, it's kind of like a G1 Climax thing. Like, if they, if they win, then they get to pick their own opponents, and they can pick anybody. And, of course, Matt, when I saw them standing in the ring, I kind of knew where they were going with this. But Matt did say that they could pick anybody and then turn to Gallows and Anderson, who were like, oh, we get it, you know, and then too sweet and everything. I'm now hoping that happens. I hope the Young Bucks win and wind up going up against... Gallows and Anderson. That is definitely a match that a lot of people would have wanted to see. Again, I just wish we had crowds for these things. Uh, but, man, because this, this card sounds to be pretty entertaining so far. But I'm hoping for that. But we'll see after the tag team battle royal next week. Matt Hardy is out to try to recruit some new people. Hangman hey, Page, who has honestly kind of been in limbo. He's been doing a comedy thing with the Dark Order. I think that's over now. But now with Matt Hardy trying to recruit Hangman Page, I like that combination, and I think there's a lot that can be done with it. So we'll see. By the way, um, <laughs> Nemeth, I forgot the guy's first name. Uh, when I saw the name and saw the guy on the screen, I had to do a double take because I thought, what, the Dolph Ziggler's in? No, it's not Dolph Ziggler. 
Um, Namath. Um, good play there, but um, stole all of Dolph Ziggler's move sets. A lot of people are not happy about that. Um, it's kind of flattering that somebody like Dolph Ziggler, it just shows you how long Ziggler's been around, that he has somebody that's... Uh, I don't know. I don't know much about this guy. He might be related to, to Ziggler for all I know, but it just was kind of interesting to, to see the name and then kind of go, oh, okay, I see what this guy's doing. Not a bad wrestler, but yeah, you might want to get your own gimmick, bro. Sting and Darby Allen are on collision course with Team Taz in this street fight, which again is the best thing they can do to incorporate Sting in any kind of action. Uh, Sting can't wrestle. I mean, probably shouldn't. I, I'm not gonna say what the guy can and can't do, but I think he probably would be advised for him not to try to wrestle some 15-minute feature match on a pay-per-view or on a dynamite or anything. But a street fight, again, much like the Undertaker's uh, graveyard match with AJ Styles last at last year's WrestleMania, Sting being in a street fight with Darby Allen and a bunch of other people around, you can hide Sting's weaknesses and just have him do things that make him look awesome, and that's the best way to do this match. Sting's name still has value, and again, adding to this Revolution card, which is actually kind of shaping up to be, it, it, may be, it might not have the best wrestling on it, but it's definitely going to be entertaining. Um, Team Taz went out and destroyed some merch guys uh, to kind of show their power, and yeah, they, they came across about, uh, as the thugs that they are trying to get them across as. I was not wild about Team Taz, but as time has gone on, I really like the group. It They do come across different than some of the other factions, which was a problem for them because it was kind of like, well, where do they fit in with all of these factions in AEW? They're the thugs and that's what they are. And I like that. I like that combination. And the thugs taking on the goth, the goth twins, Sting and Darby Allin, that's a nice dynamic. And you don't see that much in wrestling, but it's an interesting dynamic. Um, it's something I always talked about with old school wrestling where you would take different social classes. Think the Von Erichs and the Freebirds. How the Von Erichs were like the suburban family brothers, you know, wholesome middle class family and the Freebirds were like the street people. You kind of got the same kind of dynamic here with these two very different opposing um, personality types that exist in everyday culture going up against each other, so it's a pretty cool thing. There are a couple other things on the show. Britt Baker had a, a pretty good match and continued her her storyline and her feud going on. We had, oh gosh, Jungle Boy taking, uh, probably the match of the night was Jungle Boy taking on um, Dax the Axe, as we're calling him, Dax Harwood. Uh, their names are still hard for me to remember. <laughs> remember. But uh, Jungle Boy versus Dax was, I thought it was going to be a good match. It turned out, like I said, to be... Maybe the best match of the night. The main event, the eight-man tag, was pretty good, too. But I think this match, as far as a solid wrestling match, was amazing. And shock upon, upon shots, Jungle Boy won the match, which I did not think was going to happen. But it is a good way to continue this feud. And with FTR and Tully Blanchard attacking after the match and cutting off uh, Luchasaurus's horns, and then they were going to cut Jungle Boy's hair, I was like, they're not going to do that. <laughs> they, they, <laughs> the, you're not going to cut Jungle Boy's hair, not yet. Um, that that added some good heat to it. Uh, Tully Blanchard doing that that uh, Spike pile driver again. I'm worried about him. Tully, you're up there. I don't want you blowing out a knee doing that, man, but he looked good. You could tell, though, that afterwards he was huffing and puffing <laughs> to doing that spot. I mean, you know, they were they were giving him props on going uh, and doing that spot, but that was pretty good. I, I Again... I think this week on Dynamite, the feuds all together, the storylines, the way they paced them out, worked a lot better than it has for me over the past couple of weeks, which it seemed kind of rushed and jumbled. It looked like they took a little bit more time with them. And for me, it was noticeable that the show didn't feel so rushed this week as it has in the past couple of weeks. So what we've got set up for Revolution so far, we got Team Taz taking on Sting and Darby Allen in a street fight. We've got... Cody and Red Velvet taking on Shaq and Jade, which, yeah, we're going to have to see how that one works out. Looks like we're setting up possibly for the Young Bucks to take on Gallows and Anderson, which would be a great match. And as, as of right now, it looks like Kenny Omega is going to probably have that rematch with John Moxley in the main event at Revolution, which I wouldn't mind seeing. Um, so, so far, so good. We haven't had any, any of those other matches aren't official yet. So far, we only have the, the first two I mentioned, but... Revolution, last year's Revolution was one of my favorite, if not my favorite, pay-per-view of the year. So hopefully they can keep that tradition running with this year's Revolution. Um, it's hard to believe it's been a year. That was their last pay-per-view where they had a full arena of fans. 
And uh, it looked like AEW was off to the races to kind of uh, really do some solid stuff. They've done some solid shows. They've done some not so solid shows since then. But again, let's just hope that the pandemic, as far as entertainment value, that at some point during this year, and I don't know when it's going to happen, but one of these pay-per-views from AEW, WWE, Impact, Ring of Honor, whoever, we're going to see an arena. I am missing arenas full of fans now. It's been over a year. It's been, oh, it's been almost a year now. By the time Revolution comes around, it'll be almost a, a one week short of a year since we've had a pay-per-view or, or even a wrestling weekly show where there were live fans in an attendance in a big 5, 10, 15,000 seat arena. I hope we get back to that soon. But I want to know what you guys thought about AEW Dynamite this week. What do you think about the card shaping up for Revolution? Do you think some of these matches are eh? Do you think, are there some matches you're looking forward to? Let your voice be heard in the comment box below. Until then, I will see you guys for more news, rumors, and commentary right here on The Random Review. Have a good day.